Hey everyone, it's Mackenzie here from Grad Jobs, and I'm with Kaiser. Hey, how's everyone going? Kaiser here from Cap Gemini. What's happening? <laughs> what an intro! <laughs> uh, that, 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 <laughs> thank you so much for for being a part of this today, Kaiser. I really pre appreciate you being here. Uh, it's fine, Mackenzie. It's always a pleasure. You know, this is how we help each other out and grow. So happy to you know do my part and help out. Thank you, thank you, and, and I hope this will be really valuable for people out there as well. So. Maybe we'll start by um, just introducing you. You know, who who are you? What are you doing now? And yeah, yeah, sure. So I'm working as an uh, associate consultant at uh, Cap Gemini, as I've said. And every year we're running an award-winning graduate program, and we're always looking for talent. So you know, this is awesome for anyone who's listening. I hope you know you do give our company a thought, if, especially if you want to build a career in technology. At the moment, I'm working in an area um, known as like application management and development um, and managed services. Basically what we do, we, we handle large scales clients as IT outsourcing and, you know, in different areas. So right now I'm working with data a fair bit in the area that I'm at, and we're doing a lot of like backend data management for a big client. Um, and I'm just learning with a lot of people with experience, a lot of data engineers, database admin and so forth. Um, and I've been sort of like moving around in the business at times. Um, my role specifically is consulting. So basically um, it's a, it's, it's pretty diverse role. I'm sure Mackenzie, you worked in management consulting before as well. So, you know, you do different things with different clients. Um, so I, at times it's customer facing and, uh, it's also involving like technical stuff, which is what I'm doing right now. So it's been good. I've been there for about, I've been there since April. So nearly eight months. Um, and it's been fun. I've made a lot of friends, um, great people to be around. Uh, one of the drawbacks this year has been the pandemic. So we haven't gotten um, a lot of time to get to the office and work in person with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It must be uh, it must be nice to finally, hopefully, get back to normality. Normality, fingers crossed. I'm not sure about it yet. We'll see how we go. Looking at uh, Europe and what's happening over there, but um, it, it sounds like it's uh, it's an amazing role. It sounds like you're doing a lot. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's like it's a role where um, I guess. There's times where you do a lot and then we have this concept in consulting called the bench, um, which means like we're not really on a site, we're not working on a project, it's project based work. So during that time where we're usually upskilling and we have the flexibility to learn and develop and anybody wants to get into consulting, I strongly encourage that when you, if you end up doing that, use that time to get certifications. Um, I took like a one month long Microsoft training with a group of other graduates, like two months back where we did a lot of sales engagements and, you know, delivery focus and functional consulting. And we got like two Microsoft certificates out of that, um, that we had to go and like do exams for. So things like that, it's really good. Um, our company's got a great Salesforce presence as well. Um, so anybody who's interested in Salesforce and wants to come work with a great team, our graduate like hiring uh, concept is great for that because we've got lots of uh, Salesforce um, certs. So, the roles like yeah every grad you speak to here will tell you a different story um and that's amazing because you know if you i would suggest like most of your clients to network with us you know they can reach out to me as well and every person will give you something to take back whether you end up working for us or working elsewhere you'd get a lot of knowledge yeah yeah that, thank you that's awesome advice and so i guess that will kind of be a segue into our next thing so to so said people could kind of reach out to you uh, if they know they're interested so if we take it back now, a few years. So I uh, I know that you studied, it was uh, a bachelor's back in maybe 2019? Yeah, finished like my academic period in 2019. Um, and I just made the 2020 like graduate ceremony cut. And like a month after that, like we went into lockdown. So I was lucky. Yeah. Um, but I've been studying since 2013. I've been in uni in and out for a very long time. So I was an older grad when I went through. Um, so yeah, 2019. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And so what, uh, what's the story there? Why did you decide to go into the, you know, the degree that you did? Okay. Initially I wanted to be an engineer. Um, and I think I should have, when I was in high school, um, <laughs> but I just didn't think I had the discipline to study. And um, I was told that I wanted to be an aerospace engineer when I was younger. Mm. Um, I was pretty good at maths and, um, but then I just felt like like a lot of the stuff that I wanted to do, the jobs are moving overseas and I didn't have much like of an idea. 
And I'm kind of glad I didn't end up doing that because engineering is very hard and I was not a great student at university. I was bumming around and messing around. So I went into commerce because a business degree, um, we had this joke when I was back in high school, which is a very long time back that if you don't know what to do, do a business degree. Um, so yeah. I, 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 I used to be good at maths and English. So I just did a commerce degree. Um, and then I initially wanted to major in accounting and finance, which was like the cliche, um, you know, pathway. Then I sort of didn't really, I wasn't going to class much, wasn't enjoying much. So I took some time off and, uh, you know, went and worked in call centers, worked part-time, partied a lot, you know, just did all that stuff. And then um, I came back in, you know, in a, after a few years, and then I, I thought about like, you know, technology and like how it was impacting everybody in the world. And then I started to look at my degree and I had like an information systems and a data analytics pathway. And um, that was really lucky for me. Like, I think things were lined up because the degree had changed, but because I was such an old student, I could stay on the old degree pathway and I could pick those majors. So I changed majors and I sort of went towards data analytics and information systems, mm. which were completely different degrees at my university by the time I returned, but I could stick to the old platform because I was an old student. Um, and then I just sort of graduated in 2019. I just got myself together. And I, in 2017, didn't know how to, what, what a, com how a computer worked. Like I was completely a noob. Um, and like off lately, I've been like over the year, uh, I can read Python code now. Like I can write some Python code. Um, and I've like got a long way to go, but things like agile were like, you know, which is like, which is completely an alienated concept to me. Um, and I've learned so much over the years. So it was kind of like, I shifted in, in like in university. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I sort of started to realize that I wanted to work with tech. Um, and there's a lot of work in tech too. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. That, that's an awesome story. And so, um, uh, if I'm wrong, please let me know. But sure. from what I uh, I remember, you were pretty pretty uh, keen on Cap Gemini. Yep. Very early on, I feel like almost our first conversation, you were talking about Cap Gemini. Yeah. And so, yeah, why why did you choose that sort of company, and and how long ago did you even start thinking about that? So, so what happened to me, I came across Capgemini last year. Up, up until last year, I didn't know anything about Capgemini. What happened to me was because, look, I, I took a lot of time off at university. I was not academically great because I, I bummed around a lot. Like I was actually a good student. Like most of my lecturers are like my buddies and we have coffee together and chill a lot, you know, and talk about the course content and stuff. Um, but I just was in my initial years, I was a terrible student. So I didn't get any internships. I didn't get any... Um, great work experience I worked part-time roles I work locally um, so I didn't have like a great sort of portfolio throughout uni what I did in my last year of um, of university I, I joined a class at uni where it was actually a mandatory class where we had to like create ourselves to make ourselves more employable so they taught us how to network with people on LinkedIn they taught us how to you know create a resume using templates and everything so I attended a couple of workshops and what I did was I quickly figured out, like this is before I got in touch with you as well, but when I got in touch with you, we sort of sped that process up, was that I'm not getting a job by having a great profile, just it's not going to work, like it's, it's very unlikely, I'm going to have to win people to get a job, so in 2019, I cleaned up my LinkedIn profile, I made it look more professional, um, the best I could with what I had, um, I ma made sure it looked like what a graduate needs to look like, which is it needs to be humble, um, and it doesn't need to be like very loud, but it needs to show that I've done certain things. And then I, I sort of just tried to talk to as many people as possible. Um, and that wasn't working out very well because I think the techniques that I was applying wasn't great. Fast forward to 2020 when I, when I got in touch with Mackenzie, basically what happened was I, I came across Capgemini and one thing I noticed about them that stood out for me was unlike most big corporations that I'd come across, they were a company with a great graduate program. Like they had a lot of graduates that were hiring. But the thing that I liked about them was they seemed very humble and very grounded. And um, they seemed like people who can approach. And I think a lot of grads struggle with this because you get caught up in, you, you, you'll see somebody with a big title in their LinkedIn profile, like a senior manager. And you're like, oh crap, like, you know, I, how am I going to approach this person knows everything. And I don't know, I've just done like two little projects. I've done a dodgy, you know, you, and, and it's true. You're like a baby at, at what, you know, even now, like I'm I'm a baby at what I do with the people I work with. But you also, when you work with these people, you realize they're human beings. They, they're just like you. And they have so many learning gaps to fill out even now um, because they're human, right? So that's when I, I looked at Capgemini and I said, okay, they're a company that I could actually talk to the, these managers. 
Um, and then I started to, you know, s search on LinkedIn. And then I found out who our graduate manager was, who was leading the graduate program. I added as many people as possible from them. And I just sh shot my shot. And I got rejected to Cab Gemini twice in the span of like three months. Yeah. And the third time when I was offered the job, it was like, it was a completely out of like left wing. I did not realize that like they came out of left field. I had no idea. Like, you know, it was a different interaction about something completely else. And the graduate managers like, I'll get you an interview. But yeah, their ethics. Um, I, I wanted to work somewhere where I could just, you know, have good people to work around and and has a graduate program. And Cab Gemini just fit that sort of box. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. And and uh, so I won't quite dive into, you know, what that kind of final offer looks like. I know it was pretty interesting. I was pretty, uh, pretty happy when I heard you uh, explain that story to me on the phone. But one thing I really wanted to cover with your particular situation was that kind of upskilling, because from what I remember, you know, right at the beginning when uh, I first met you, you put a really heavy emphasis on making yourself technically, you know, good enough. And you really wanted to be technically good enough uh, to, you know, before you kind of went in for these, these more technical roles. So what was your thought process around that? And how did it look for you? Absolutely. So in terms of technical stuff, um, I don't know if this is my advantage or like my disadvantage, but initially I looked at, because I did, I knew nothing and I would Google a lot over the last couple of years because I was just genuinely interested in how technology worked. Um, this is why I say I should have done an engineering degree um, because I was, I got very academic about it, right? To a point where I had this approach where I need to know all these frameworks. I need to know this much data analysis. I need to have these many projects on Python, right? What I'd suggest to people now about technical skills is work backwards, um, you know, work backwards from it. So if you want to develop an app, work backwards and find out what technical skills that are, want, that are needed for that. Because if you were using my approach back then, you'd go crazy with like realizing how much information is out there and how different each space of technology is, right? So I did not do this initially, but it kind of worked as well because it gave me a broad spectrum knowledge of technology, like just the high level that I needed to know. So I knew a little bit about networks, I understood what programming languages were because I spent like, like, I, I, like sometimes I like, this is really nerdy, but at like 1 a.m. I'd like get an idea of like, oh, how does this work? How does this microprocessor work? Or like, how does this code get, you know, goes through something? And I was like, why am I doing this at 1 a.m.? But I was just curious. So a lot of it was just, it had nothing to do with my role or anything like that. But I kind of started to get a bit of an idea of how things technically move. I realized how um, Agile started off as a software development framework. And now it's used to like, just do things like, run a project for consulting, which has no code involved or anything like that. Um, so that was the thing. Um, in terms of upskilling, the one thing I did last year from a job perspective was I did a virtual, um, like a virtual internship in consulting uh, with a top four firm. So that was like amazing. And I got a cert for it. And, and that, was, that was really like, that really probably helped um, speed up things in my, in my, um, on my profile, sorry. And just talking to people was, I genuinely think like it's the interactions that I've had with people that landed, landed me the job, um, not the actual like profile. And that's probably um, what most graduate hires are looking for, I guess, is yeah, they're looking for people to have done the bare minimum. They have their passport, like their degree or cert certifications or whatever, but they're predominantly looking for people that they can sort of work with and have a good thing with to work with. If you can be a humble enough person and you can be transparent about, you know, like, okay, I'm, I'm a graduate and I've really, I've tried and I'm really willing to do, but like, I, I need guidance and I haven't really, you know, I've not really had a great, like, profile. I don't have 15 years experience. I, I can't have that. It's fine. They know that. They've been there. They just want to see if you're, if you're a, a person that they can work with. That, that genuinely, I think, is what, what's worked for me. Um, and uh, yeah, that's. That's that's the thing. That's that's in terms of like upskilling, I guess, and technical knowledge. Does that does that cover anything, or is there anything you, you feel I'm missing? Yeah, no, I think that covers it. I um, because a lot of people come to me and they say, hey, you know, I uh, they ask questions like, what technical <laughs> skill should I learn? You know, do I need to you know know every tech every you know coding language that they've got on the job description? And you know, do I need to be, how good do I need to be before I go for it? You know, do I need to have work experience in that or do I just need a cert? You know, what are these virtual online, uh, online internship things? 
And so I just get those questions a lot. So it's great to hear from your perspective, what worked for you, which just to summarize, seems like it was a more reverse engineering, you would recommend now reverse engineering what they're looking for, acquiring those skills, but really, especially for, for fir firms that are more that consulting style, looking for graduates, have a good training program, actually try and build relationships. So they actually like you, they trust you, they think you're good, they wanna work with you. And then you have the, you know, the basics, the fundamentals. Yep. And, and that's kind of how you, especially for a firm like Capgemini, that's yeah. a way for you to get in there. Yep. And I, I add to this as well and say that certifications and like this was my approach before, I need to be so competent. I need to, but you're not going to be, even if you complete certifications, even if you complete projects, because in anything technical, it's practice and it's repetition, right? So you see, you can go and look at any person who's a senior software developer. I, that, I'm just, that job comes to my mind because it's highly technical. You see how many years they've spent working in different areas and each area they've worked in for so long because they have so many tools to use, to get used to so many systems, so many programming languages. You don't learn that overnight. Um, you can't just learn Java in a year, do like small projects throughout the year and then go, okay, um, now I'm competent in Java. It's like, well, how much work experience have you had? Have you worked in a team? Have you done any testing? There's many layers to it. So on the job experience is probably the best. It's the most cliche thing, but it's, it's true. I, I will agree with that. Um, in terms of consulting, I think the skills in consulting, are like they can vary. You can be highly technical. You can be highly business oriented and functional. You can be a hybrid of both. Um, some of the directors that I've worked with in the company, they've, um, they've started off as coders, for example, and now they work as architects. So that's like a hybrid of like, of a technical slash functional role. Um, cool. I might just lost that for a sec. Um, can you see me okay? I just paused it for a second. I think you might be on mute. No worries. Yeah, I just unmuted it. Yeah, no, no. Um, yeah, back to what I was saying. I mean, basically, with any company that has a like a strong corporate social responsibility focus, like Capgemini as well, one of the advices I'll give people is when you talk to people in interviews or you 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 speak to any of their managers or whatever, just even casually, um, and if they ask you like questions around you know what you want to do and stuff, um. Like before you you ever discuss with any of these people, I think one thing you, you should ask yourself is what problems you want to solve in the world. It's it's a really big thing these days that a lot of the managers look for. And it's a fair thing. It's like, it's what's, it's basically asking what drives you to work um, more than just, you know, getting paid and having a career. Like, what do you want to use your career for? And having like a good answer to that, that that is a real answer to what you value. It just reflects that um, that you want to work towards something more than just having a, you know, a fancy career or having something. And they really like that. Um, that is definitely something that I've, I've seen a lot. And a lot of the people that I work with, like the other graduates, um, a lot of them are very passionate about a lot of those things. So um, it doesn't have to be like a social equitable thing. It could be, it could be anything. It could be like, I want to be a better parent and I want to try, you know, be able to help use technology in a way to like, create an efficient lifestyle for parenthood, whatever your purpose is, but you should be able to share that with them openly. Um, mm. They really like that and they, they want to know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's an awesome piece of advice. And I, um, it's funny because it, it actually takes, well, at least for me and, and you know, my experience with people I work with, it, uh, it takes a little bit of time just to figure that out as well. And, and usually, you know, whenever I kind of ask someone, you can figure out pretty quickly when you ask someone what, whether that like what do they want to achieve and then why whether they've thought about it at all um, and if they haven't it can take a little while to actually figure this stuff out but you know my personal experience is oh it's it's just incredibly valuable because even though it might take maybe a day maybe two maybe even a week to even get a vague idea yeah. it's, um it, it comes across in interviews when you're having chats you can genuinely say you know they ask you why you want this job you can you don't have to re remember a script you know exactly why you want this job. It all links. It's all coherent. Like it's all all flowing. So that's that's uh, definitely very very important. And thanks for for flagging. And it's 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 interesting as well because um, obviously you know these companies they they want good people. But you know if you're going to be someone who's genuine and your your why is is real, you're probably going to not only add more value, but you're probably going to you know be a better employee, stay longer 
contribute more. Um, you're going to embody the brand of the company. You're going to sell it better, you know, like you are now. I'm sure after watching this, people are going to be messaging you to sign up for Capgemini. I definitely, I definitely suggest because the thing is, look, I'm 26, but a lot of the grads are like 21 to 23. And um, to be very fair, like once you hit around 25, like a lot changes in your perspective. Um, I don't know if that's for everybody, but for a large amount of people that I talk to, I do. So for those, for, but I know myself and I was 21, 23 and like how I perceive the world's very different to how I perceive it like five years later. The thing is that at that age, I would love to have like good guidance and good people around me. Um, it's really, really important. And that's what I really like, like where I work, um, there are moments where, you know, things are difficult, work is pressuring or whatever. But the thing that's good about it is um, the people that I work with, the senior managers, it never feels like they're people of authority. You know, like, no, there's, there's very little drama. And I'm not just saying this to, you know, to make my company look good and to promote that, but it's really good for young people to, to sort of be in that space and get that kind of, you know, like servant leadership from the people around you. Um, you know, cause the managers are probably like in their late thirties to mid fifties. That's the kind of age range that they have, but they're really supportive and really good people in, in, in terms of like how they interact with you and how they, they, they deal with things with you. So I, I definitely would say that like, that is a good thing. And you make lots of friends, you know, you, you make a lot of, you meet a lot of people in there in, in, in a similar age bracket to you, which is great because, you know, coming to work is fun. Like, you know, that's, that's kind of, it's kind of like university where I work because it's, it's like all the grads, we sort of know each other because we're from the same batch, but then we work in different service lines. So we're in different classes and stuff, but we all sort of meet in the lunchroom or we have like a banter, we go to drinks together. Yeah. It, it's great. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's really, really awesome. And so so what haven't we covered yet? We've covered, you know, why you kind of wanted to study what you did, we've covered kind of how you made that step up. And, and to summarize, it was through, yes, upskilling, figuring out what you wanted, your why, your purpose, but also just building relationships genuinely. The way I would maybe like to cover, and, and we can cover some other things that you, you know, maybe you think we maybe kind of skipped over, but so that double rejection, double rejection and then the offer. Most people that I speak to, one rejection is enough to put them off forever. You know, they will apply to a company, say, let's just say Deloitte. They apply to Deloitte and they say, sorry, Bob, you're not, you're not a good fit for us today. And they say, you know, please keep in touch though. You know, we'll keep your resume on file, blah, blah, blah. But they're thinking, oh no, I can't get into Deloitte anymore. And they kind of forget about it, go somewhere else. But you did not use that approach, did you? No, so, so with me, what happened, I'll give a, give people a bit of a run through of how things work as well. So they can, if they're thinking of applying, they can prepare themselves better for, you know, the process. So how it works with us is you initially put your resume through, you go through the system or somebody that you network with will take a resume and, and tell you how to apply. And um, basically what happens is then you, they get, they shortlist you, you've got to do some assessments. You've got to pass the assessments. Um, there's a lot of practices for assessments online. I know graduates everywhere do those practice questions and then they finally, you know, do those logic tests and exams. That's, that's, that part gets out of the way. And then what happens is you go to this, um, like we have a mass group uh, interview sort of field day type of situation where a lot of grads come in for the whole day and we do like an entire day's worth of activities and groups and things. And I had to do all this over Zoom because of the pandemic. Usually this is done on site. And um after that, it, or in that, sorry, there's individual interviews as well that you do with people. You do like short 15 minute talks with, with some managers and senior leaders. And then um, after that stage, they'll, they'll tell you if there's going to be an interview after that or you've not gone forward. So the first time I did that, um, I, was, I was being uh, like looked at for the sales force area, um, didn't get through after the group interview and I thought I did really well in the group interview because I vibed with everybody and I was sort of waiting for people to talk and have their shot and then if nobody was talking but I didn't get through then the second time the graduate manager got in touch with me and she she said do you want to work in the data side of things and you know I've got a spot there I can get you an interview with some managers straight away um, so they asked me that I had a one-to-one -one interview there was nothing else that I had to do and again um you know, the one-to-one -one interview went well. It was okay. I thought I didn't do as great as I could have. Um, and I think they looked for somebody more technical than me, but I didn't get that. After that, I was kind of disheartened. So I said, okay, um, I'll keep my eyes open, but now I just got to probably go back to working part-time jobs and whatever. So I applied for like call center work um, and I got a call center job in Feb like earlier this year. And I was in my training phase for with my call center work. And um, 
what happened was the person who got me a job in the call center, they have like their son goes to school with somebody else and he needed work, like a work experience at IT. So I was messaging a lot of like people on LinkedIn, like small, um, you know, IT management companies or like network management or like service desk companies basically to try and get him, get him some work experience. And I asked the lady who hired me if she knew anybody in a network base because she's been in consulting for so long that if she knows any clients or any person that, you know, like mid to small scale that can give him some experience because he's in, he's in, uh, he's a school student and he's struggling at school and he's just coming out of it. Um, and then she's, she actually really liked that. So she's like, you know, I, I really wish that you worked with us and sort of, you know, um, I've got this opening here, you know, cause I really, you're a, you're a person that I'd like in our company. So my interactions with her are great. and like we're really good now like me and her are really good friends like she's you know she has interactions with me even now despite like since i've been hired um and you know she got me to speak with a with, with my with my vp um with the vice president who's like in our company it's like vice president director you know, senior like junior director i think there's like ranks there so she's basically one of the one of the highest ranks in our department and she was got, got me into an interview. So I dressed, like I put a shirt on and like, you know, was ready for an interview. She was chilling with her cats in a zoom call like this, just hanging out, you know, asking me questions. We had a chat for like half an hour. Um, and yeah, I got the job after that. And I was like, I was, I was like, wow. Okay. So it wasn't the way I pictured it to happen. It happened when I didn't expect it. I didn't even know. And then it was great, but I feel like building that relationship with people is important. And um, one of the things that I did um, was even in my initial approach, I was open about what I could bring and who I really was at that time. I didn't want to like sugarcoat it and, and be like, you know, I'm brash and I, I know so much. Um, and perhaps that's because I got a little older and like you, I humbled up a bit over the years um, with my experiences, but that's kind of what worked at the end of it. Um, yeah, that's, that's how the process worked for me. And for a lot of my friends, they got in straight away, like, you know, um, with that and the funny thing is the second role that i was rejected for the current like team that i'm working with all belong in that department and i'm doing that kind of work now that i initially wasn't selected for so it, it's it's you know it's it's just it's um depending things keep changing i guess and like you know you just got to keep trying yeah definitely and that's a it's a really really good story it's a story actually <laughs> tell people from now and then you know and people get rejected or they I don't like saying rejected people always say I got rejected I like maybe using something like unsuccessful at this time kind of thing yeah because yeah. really like you you didn't get rejected because you're working there now um they still wanted to hear from you they still wanted to you know be in touch and um and now that you know people know that that's possible it's something people are actually able to somewhat replicate you know if you Say, for example, imagine every opportunity that you go for, instead of as a one-time race, you know, like 100 metres, you win or you lose, yep. more like, you know, you're kind of, uh, you know, planting these seeds everywhere, you're building these relationships, you're just, you know, keeping them nice and um, watered and, and, and healthy. And you never know when that opportunity is just going to drop down um, because of that relationship that you've got. Definitely. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a really amazing story. And, and I guess like, like I, I, can, I can partially agree with you with the rejection thing. I think the way I see it is I, I, I do say rejection, but I don't say, I say it's not like you're not wanted. I say it's just not a good fit. Like, you know, it's, it's like in most things, like, if, like for dating, for example, like somebody might not be a good fit for you. It doesn't mean that they're bad or you're bad or whatever. Like, it's just, it's not a good fit. Same with the jobs. It's like, it's not a good fit. Like if I, there's um, like, I went for a, for a job interview last year with a local call center and like for a part-time work. And they rejected me, um, you know, so they didn't want me to work over there. Um, but it was just not a good fit. Maybe they they were looking for somebody else there. And I'm working for a multinational company now. After two rejections, they say I was a good fit. So it, it just depends. It doesn't mean I have disrespect for either organization or whatever. I don't have that. And that's another thing, like my, my graduate uh, manager was saying, like a lot of people show resentment when this happens. And I, I, I was surprised because I'm not sure if it's the pandemic that has made us less patient as people or whatever, but you can't do that. Like I, I would suggest it's, it's, it's just, you know, because even like, even if you're disappointed, like handling it like with, with maturity and, and emotional intelligence is probably better for you. And it's also going to keep more people in your network in the future, because let's say you didn't get a job with like a, a big four company today, a few years later, you might become a client that, that they really value. 
and you might be a manager for a private company that's that's their client and then you might actually be pulled in by them to work there in the future you never know with your relationships or you might find your business partner your life partner on that project so having resentment and like you know being upset at some organization or somebody you know it, it's it's probably just because you didn't get a job with them it's probably not not the best thing to do for any party involved definitely definitely and and there are other pathways as well you know one example i'll give you is one uh, person that i work with in uh, south australia so they actually had an interview for a data analytics type role at a pretty cool company and you'd say you could say you know they rejected him and but, but he didn't they he didn't really maintain the relationship as such but he didn't keep the door closed you know he was he didn't show resentment he didn't keep the door closed he actually went and reskilled at the thing that they said he was a bit weak in he completely reskilled and it came back like four four weeks later and said hey i've got this skill down packed give me you know another shot and uh, and he got the job from there so Absolutely. so there are other ways of of uh, you know countering a you know what you call a rejection you know it's it's just like a like you said it's just uh that at that time it wasn't a good fit but um yep. yeah and that's where linkedin comes in to, to a lot of people because it could it, people could say it's manipulative i don't know but i guess the platform is <laughs> there to showcase it's there to showcase your skills and your availability to work and collaborate with people so what you should what people i would do with linkedin and i still do sometimes is I keep myself visible. Like I try to, if I, if there's something that I learn and everybody updates when they get a certification or whatever, but you need to be visible to the people that you want to collaborate with. That's what I did last year. So I, um, and sometimes look, some people go and comment on everything that that person posts or whatever. No, but just, just react to certain things. Like if they actually put an article, go and read the article. If it's something that interests you and actually ask them a question on it, not just because you want a job, but it's actually because you might actually pick something up and learn something. You know, um, because they can they can very comfortably they, they work in HR. They know when you're trying to just get a job out of them. You know, they're able to stay able to read that type of behavior. Um, but being visible to them is also you're doing them a favor because you're narrowing down their search, right? If you get an AWS cloud certification, then they might be looking for somebody with an AWS cloud certification. Um, so yeah, I know LinkedIn can get a bit like there's a lot of debate on like the the kind of conduct on LinkedIn, and I can understand that because social media and all that you know, is a big, is a, is a big topic these days, but mm -hmm. the whole concept is on LinkedIn. If you look at it, is I'm here to work. Um, these are the things that I can do. Um, and this is, this is how I can, how I've delivered certain things. And if you're looking for somebody like that, you know, um, cool, you know, I, I'm here, like I'm, I'm in front of you. Um, so it's like, you know, terrible example, but if you ever watch like bank robbery movies, like they need like a, a, a getaway driver, they need a shooter, they need somebody who's going to break the vault, you know, and they, if they know, they always ask the person, you know, this guy, you know, somebody who can do that, you know, this girl who can hack into the system. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, I know somebody. And th that through that, they, they get the, the right high screw together and they work on that. And I think these days it's, it's, it's become like that. You have to stand out to be noticed. And then once you're noticed, there's a process. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's, that's something I would recommend um, to keep that door open. It's like being, a, it's kind of, it's, it's really comes down, like when you, when it comes down to it, you, you're marketing yourself, right? Like uh, yeah. you, you got to be top of mind or the consumer's not going to buy. It's, it's funny if you look at um, like an <coughs> example is with Trump with the election. Yep. Like, so, because just people just knew his name, he was everywhere. They just, they, he was top of mind and they were just voting for Trump. They didn't, they didn't yeah. even buy half the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People, that's the thing, like in, in today's day and age, like, being a powerful brand is very important. Like you look at like Kanye West, you look at like Donald Trump, you look at anybody who's a powerful brand, right? Like they have a cult like following. Like Kanye West can say that I'm releasing a pair of shoes at um at a local like like what's it called? Uh, like a local like grocery store. Yeah. And people will line up, you know. Um look at like Apple iPhones. Like you can get the same phone a month later, but people will will line up the night of its release. Cause it sits there. So, I mean, this is like crazy brands, right? These people are very famous and whatever, but I guess like when you look at, um, when you look at like just your individual self, you probably want to just be a visibility to like, like 30 to a hundred people that have influence to hire you. Um, not just that, but even when you're in a job, like even when you're in a company, we've been told this in consulting as well. Like this was the advice given to us that if you want to get promotions and you want to move up in your career, you have to be sort of visible. 
Um, because if they don't see what you're providing, how can they, how would they know you exist? It's, it's the simplest thing, right? Anything you've ever bought, you've, you've bought because you've come to a realization that it exists. It's the simplest thing. Um, if you never knew it was there, you never saw it, you never buy it. So that one, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, it's like when people, people uh, approach me and they say, Hey, you know, I applied to a thousand jobs online. I'm just like, Whoa, a thousand yeah. jobs. And yeah. how many interviews you have? They're like, Oh, I've had maybe like two or three. Yeah. And then, well, it's like, well, how, do you, has anyone seen your resume? Have they seen you? Have they, do they know about you? And, and that's a, a, a massive, uh, issue a lot of people run into because they just end up you know sitting at home applying online and it's comfortable but you're not really being seen yes your piece of paper is being seen your piece of paper can be really really good and it can definitely work well uh, but you've sometimes like you figured out you need to kind of get out of your comfort zone and get noticed right yeah that's that's the truth and people can train you to do a job you know i've noticed that like most of the people that have come and given us career advice at work we're not doing the very thing that they're doing now. And the reason they got those roles is because of who they are and what they're willing to do. Um, like a lot of the senior leaders were, I have senior leaders who didn't work in tech. They worked in like chemical engineering. Actually our company's CEO was a, was a chemical engineer. He didn't work in technology, right? He worked in like, like he was, he's qualified in, you know, in, in, um, in civil engineering, I'm oh, sorry, in chemical engineering. Um, Similarly, like a lot of my managers and stuff, they worked in like accounting, you know, our MD here, she worked in a very different area um, to, to working in like tech. So it's, it's people have navigated through their careers and moved towards something. Um, there are people who started their careers off as like, like I said, like coders, and then they've moved to like business analyst roles, for example. Um, some people have gone from working in business roles to more technical ones, and they work with like AI and all that. So you know, it's, it's having the right support. It's having, I'd say like, if I had to start a thing over, I'd want to have good people around me who would actually be very competent that I can learn from because I'm, I'm new to everything. And I'd want to have, um, you know, experience and working and, and just keep trying and iterating and learning. That's, that's probably the best way to, I guess, to learn rather than going through it by the book and then, you know, going on and then, yeah. Yeah. It's so it's, it's, there's no shame in being like, and that's the thing, like even on LinkedIn, you can, there's a way of being humble. Like you can say like, look, I'm, I'm a graduate. Like I just finished uni. I, I've just started my life. Like I really, <laughs> you know, I need a job, but I also really need to learn things. And this is what I want to do if I got the right opportunity. And they'll, they'll just go like, yeah, you know, this person reminds me of me or this person, I like what they're thinking. They're, they're, they just want a chance. It'll give you a shot. And when you come to the other side, that's the thing you want to give other people a shot too. Like when I see like a lot of the people on your Post saying they've gotten jobs I feel really happy because I know this time is really terrible um, in terms of like getting work and you know the way things are with this pandemic but I feel like it's it's you really want to because you can relate to not having a job for so long you know living on a student budget like some people work like two jobs as international students and you know they they somehow scrape through university and they're working with immigration laws and things so it's really, I feel really happy for those people when I see them get a role because I know how much it means to them and how, how much the struggle has been there. Um, and that's why I keep saying like, you know, if there's anybody in your thing, they can just reach out to me on LinkedIn. Like I can, you know, assist them the best I can. I mean, I can't guarantee giving everybody a role, but hmm. I could definitely help them just, you know, with the things that work for me and work for people around me and, and what my company is looking for. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you very much. And that's, that goes to show cause, cause, uh, a lot of the time I'll tell people, you know, or like you said, before, they'll say, you know, consultant, associate consultant, senior consultant. Oh, I'm not sure I can reach out to them. You know, why would they be interested in me? You know, I'm just a graduate. But um, a lot of people don't realize that, like you said, and it's, it's just proof, you know, right here, guys, they want to help you. People want to help you. And um, not everyone does. That's for sure. Like a lot of people don't, they're happy just, you know, doing their job and they don't want to, you know, they don't want to go out of their way to give advice, but there are a lot of good people, you know, like Kaiser, who genuinely want to help. You know, they would probably, probably, hopefully I'm not overstepping here, they'd probably have like a 5, 10, 20 minute chat with you if, you know, it was for a, for a good reason and you, you approached it the right way. So, um, yeah, thank you.
No, no, absolutely. They're just human beings. Like I always say that. Like the quicker, you, and you learn that because in, in the interview room, the people that I sat with, I was so nervous with. Like at work, I'm like, now when do I see them or when do I interact with them? Like, they're just cool. Like they're just chill people. Um, you know, they're making jokes. Like I remember this one lady. We had we have this thing called master classes when we're training grads. When you come into your junior induction, and this lady was making jokes and like chilling, and I was chilling with her, and I was making jokes. I had my camera on. Um, and then I later on realized she's a director, and I was like, oh man, like okay, cool. But she was just like she was human, you know, and that's that's the beauty of it like i like working with people like that because they're they're very approachable very chilled um and look some people are not in the world right that's also gonna happen i'm not gonna try and paint a picture for people that it's not like that some people are very like yeah whatever like they will give you one line replies and they won't care but it's all right it's, it's just part of the experience like you know um it's it's there's nothing wrong with asking the question to people and you're not gonna know until you ask the question you know um and I know some people, like one of my lecturers at UD, she was like, every job I've got, even this one, I've got it through people. I've never really gone through traditional applications. I was really impressed. She used to work in fashion and then she moved to teaching fashion at universities. And then she was teaching us how to get jobs at universities. It was very, very interesting how she got, she was like, I was working at um, like a TAFE teaching fashion. This opportunity came up because of one of my networks was looking for someone and I jumped onto it and she was like, yeah, let's do it. And that's it. Like, and I was like really impressed. Um, like a 50 something year old person saying that they've got every job nearly that they've done in their career without going through a traditional pathway. So, yeah. It shows you as well. And I, I just did a poll recently. You might've seen it. A lot of yeah, people, you know how they say, you know, 80% or whatever, 75% <laughs> of jobs aren't advertised. Yeah. I wanted to put that to test with my specific network and that it wasn't quite that skewed, but hidden jobs or, or people who uh, won jobs through relationships was definitely higher than advertised, even in my network where, you know, it's probably biased towards applications. So it's, it's a fact of life. And it'll be interesting to see how things go, you know, with LinkedIn becoming so prevalent and more and more people kind of jumping on it. Be interesting to see what happens with applications. Very yeah, absolutely absolutely it would be very interesting i honestly think <clears throat> applications in my perspective these days i think with large companies with big intakes applications are just like sort of like they'll probably take a very small intake i think a large percentage of people because of linkedin's prominence now are coming through like these these channels i just i feel like because it just and it also helps the hirers you know speed up their process of getting intake it helps the person applying for the job just skip steps you know, like bureaucratic steps. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I guess. It will be interesting. Awesome. Well, I think, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, there, there were a couple of small questions I wanted to ask. Just yeah, to please, please. So yes. The first one is with what I do. So what, what was the main thing that attracted you to, I guess, book a call with me and work with me? in terms of the, the job search side of things? I thought I'd give you a shot. I was lost, you know, I can't, can't deny that. I think most graduates feel that way when they're lost. Um, when I finished studying, I think my cousin was saying it takes an average of about two years for a graduate to land a full-time role after they finish studying, right? At least back in 2019, I think that's gonna be a lot more now, I guess, considering we had a pandemic right after that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was just like, yeah, let's give Mackenzie a shot. He's on LinkedIn. Again, I met you through LinkedIn crazy you know <laughs> LinkedIn's great like that um and then I said yeah look Mackenzie seems like a person with experience he he seems to know how to get how to get jobs and stuff and how to approach people and also to invoke a bit of discipline in me because there's a bit of accountability that you need you know you come to a stage where you've been unemployed and graduated for a while that you just kind of go you know what like I don't you feel discouraged you know like I don't want to do this anymore I'm tired of rejections and tailoring my resume because it's really like it's really I guess admin kind of stuff right? Doing 50 quizzes, you know? Um, and then when I met you and I realized, okay, well, I can change this. I can sort of have a, have a different approach. I can probably try and talk to people. And, and it's, it's also my skill. Probably that's why I've gotten into a consulting role because I, I'm good at talking to people. And that's kind of what, what my strength has been. I can apply that and sort of get, get work, right? Then I can, I can move along. So let's see what he has to say. Let's work with him. Um, and, what was really good was like you said that your service is available for a lifetime. Like we become a lifetime client with you, which was really great. Um, at least when I joined, that was a thing. So I was really happy. So I was like, I can always like have somebody in my corner if I need. Um, 
because you know you you need that kind of support it's a person in your network you're running a business you probably a lot of the clients that you have now tomorrow in the future might be valuable people to have in your network so it's is you know and there's no shame in that we all help each other that's that's just the nature of things awesome awesome and so so in terms of the the value that was kind of a bit of that accountability and that kind of discipline and <laughs> also a bit of a kind of opening the eyes to that approach where you could not just do all this admin stuff, which wasn't your forte, you could actually leverage your, and we haven't covered this yet, but your excellent writing skills and speaking skills to get jobs. So kind of opening your eyes to that and accountability, main two things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Excellent. Okay, thank you. That really helps me. And so lastly, last thing is, if you had to give advice, so say there's you know, a student or a graduate watching this, they could be in their first year, they could be, you know, they could have graduated three years yep. ago. I spoke to someone the other day, graduated maybe four years ago, yep. haven't been able to land a job yet, yeah. still looking. What would you say? What's your advice from Kaiser? Okay, I'm being a bit generalistic here because I don't know everybody's situation in that. But well, the first thing I'd say is those years are like some of the best years of your life. Firstly, right? Like just, I want people to get that into account. Like when you're actually on a student budget and you go out with your friends on a Tuesday night and you do stupid stuff, those are actually some of the greatest. Cause so enjoy that as well, because when you start working full time and you, you start building your career and maybe you'll eventually start a family and those, those things sort of, they, they become great memories because a lot of times we get caught up when we're in, in uni and we're in this phase that one day I'll get a job and I'll work and I'll, you know, I'll do well for myself. And that's great, but it doesn't solve all your problems. New problems come into place just because your financial situation has improved and, you know, you probably have some prestige with the job you do or whatever, you know, people value. But some of the most fun I've had um, is in that time. And I, I look back, I'm, I'm sure you know who Mark Cuban is. He's, he's a very famous business person, right? Mm-hmm. Mark Cuban was talking about, he's a billionaire. And he was talking about when he lived in an apartment with a couple of guys um, that shared and they were working small jobs and putting money together to start their enterprise or whatever. He said, we'd buy every Friday night, we'd buy this $10 bottle of wine after all the expenses, like rented stuff was taken care of. And we'd walk around looking for like college parties and like, you know, we do stupid <laughs> stuff. And he goes, those were the best days of my life. Like those days I can't replace when I was poor and I was, I was, you know, I was uh, just living with these dudes, but they were the greatest memories. So that's the first thing I'd say to people who are in this predicament, enjoy the good things about it, enjoy the free time um, and, you know, get your mental health together as well, get your mind together. It's really important in the, in this day and age, because I know my mental health had dipped a lot and moved on um, from there. So take care of yourself personally. Um, the government offers like 10 sessions of counseling on Medicare, for example, if you're a citizen here. So you know, there's, there's a lot of resources around that, you know, reach out to people and just, just uh, take care of yourself first. The second thing from a professional perspective, I guess, like, yeah, if they're working with you, excellent, you know, you've got, a, like, you've got so many resources. I'm sure that you have I've got to check your website and stuff out again, because you've made changes, I'm guessing, right? Um, yeah, it's changed a lot. <laughs> it's changed a lot. So, yeah, exactly. So there'll be, you know, so there's, there's, I'm still sure that there's plenty there um, for them to use, but yeah, there's, there's all that. Um, and going forward, I think it's just, just, it's just trial and error. No one's journey is the same, mm-hmm. but just have the belief. Um, there's going to be bad times where they teach you a lot. Um, like I'm so glad that I didn't know so much um, and I've, I'm still learning so much. And sometimes it's going to be difficult. Sometimes there's going to be fear of like disappointing people. And that's going to, that's very natural. Like you've got to forgive yourself, um, but keep trying, you know, keep trying with people. Um, some of the biggest disappointments will be people that we really look up to, we value. Some of the greatest lessons we learn will also come from that same source. And some of these people that you never know will do so much for you when you least expect it. Like in my case, when I was offered the role, when I didn't expect it, I was like disheartened and I was working in a call center. I was like, I got to build from here. But um, what I like is when I started working with you, I had accountability. So I said, there's somebody there and I need to consistently try. And we used to do this, these phone calls, I think every two, three weeks. Yeah. yeah you check up on me and I had to answer to you. So I would be like, okay, McKenzie's going <laughs> to call me. So I better move my ass and like do something about it because you know, it's, it's important. Um, so yeah, accountability is good. And, and just, you know, being good to yourself is good because it's, it's a, it's a place where your self-esteem dips, you know, yeah. hard when you don't have a job for like a year or two years and your friends and your peers are like working and, you're seeing the grass is green on the other side, but I want people to know that like 
um, you know, because the situation could be different. Somebody could have serious financial issues with their family or somebody could have a sick relative. So I don't want to assume that it's the best years of everybody's lives. But I feel like in general, like if you're, if the job thing's the problem, then it's, it's, it's okay. It will solve itself out. Just keep trying. And um, once you sort of get past the admin stuff, um, then it's like, then it's, you know, then it's just repetition of your people's skills. And, and it's just about someone, you'll find the right fit somewhere. Mm. You know, um, and no shame in working for a for a, a not a non prestigious place. You know, because some of the best skills you learn are from a non prestigious place. Um, some of the best experience, like when I've worked in, you know, I worked at like restaurants at uni, right? I worked for below minimum wage at times, and some of the greatest experience I had with people were, were them. Like the stories I have to tell are there. Some things I learned from certain people, like some of the chefs that I worked with. You know, um, they never were chefs before. They, they were like, they were kitchen hands or they, they, my, they immigrated here and like they struggled and then they sort of picked up the skills from a main chef, the main chef left and crazy stuff like that. I worked in call centers where I've had like OH&S issues. Like I had like a headset that was giving me a rash and the managers didn't care. And, you know, I've had that, but it's, it's also sort of made me stand up for myself at times, made me learn these things. So there's, there's just experience is amazing. Like good or bad in, the, in hindsight, it's great. Um, and keep 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 trying you know um, keep trying my sister's worked for many big companies she's worked on the great people she's worked on the people that have made her very depressed um, you know so she's worked for jobs that paid her relatively more than other jobs where she's sad so it's it's really not the, that the grass is green on the other side in every situation everything is just neutral like you go you join you see how it is for yourself you work with certain people you learn and then you sort of just make up your mind and you know what your experience is yeah sorry I went on a few tangents there but I don't no, know. I don't know. anything else like any other thoughts that you you know you want to get out to people you've got some great thoughts yeah yeah look i mean i just feel like just 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 like just be in the moment you know uh, this is what i wasn't doing uh, last year it's more like this is more like a personal thing but it's like i you know it's like you're so fixated in this phase of like i don't have a job and i finished uni now what you have this linear sort of mindset it's just about like, there's a lot going on there that you'll realize later on that, oh, I had this, this going on. There's a personal thing happening here or there's a professional thing there or there was a life lesson here. Like, you know, because we get caught up in, in just getting work and just, we think it's linear. I'll get a job, then I'll get a promotion, then I'll move. And sometimes you get a job and then like a relative passes away or there's like, you know, like you, get, you have to move for work to a new city then you have to start a new life over there. So it, there's like so many of my colleagues have moved cities. I've made like some of my best friends at work at the moment have all moved. One's moved from overseas. Um, one's moved into state. So it's, it's crazy. They've lived away from their families during a pandemic. They've had their challenges. I've had people on the phone, like literally open up and cry to me sometimes who work with me because it's been difficult for them to adapt to this change. Um, but, you know, um, and that's after they got a, you know, like a prestigious job. So it's, it's the difficulties don't it, neither do the joys. Um, so just uh, like that, that would be my biggest suggestion to uni students, um, you know, and if you're early in uni, <laughs> they've reached out to you. Do you have a fair few clients like that who are like first or second year? I do have clients in first or second year. They're, they are uh, few and far between though. Mostly it's, uh, it's uh, right towards the end or shit. It's like, it's been six months since I graduated kind of thing. I would, I would tell anyone in first or second year that's with you to take a year off uni and go and like do things that are that. Yeah. That scares oh, them. Right, and they almost got a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, obviously like, if they got a job or whatever, that's fine. And if their life permits them to, but if they're just sort of like going through uni, like, like most of us and life is quite consistent, I would dearly recommend them to do that. Maybe travel, maybe do some different type of work. Um, you know, like when I took time off uni and I worked at call centers, I'd learned what it's like to work full time. Um, there was a time when I was working like five to six days a week at times as well. And it was a good experience because like it was, I got a sense of the real world for a bit. Um, I think I could have done other things, but it's really important. It will really cultivate your character and uh, you have the capacity to do it when you're young. Um, and it might actually be 
like you might talk to an employee in the future and you can be like, I went skiing or I went like diving for a year and I worked at this far. And the, the, the CEO person or whoever is like interviewing you would be like, you know, I did this when I was 22. Like I went to Tibet and like I, I climbed like all these mountains because I was really interested and I've lived in it. And then you can, you can have that personal sort of link with the person too. Like that shouldn't be your primary objective of doing that, but it's a great way of having um, rapport with people. Like when you have things apart from, you know, I studied this and, you know, I did this and, you know, I, I occasionally play golf on weekends. Like there's, there's <laughs> more, you know, there's gotta be more to, to it than that. Like we, we did introductions the other day and I told people like, I love Disney movies and I love mixed martial arts. And I, I have no idea how those things are correlated <laughs> because one is like violent and nasty. The other one's like very emotional and, you know, like uh, childish. So it was, it's just funny, but it, it's, these are the things that build rapport with people. Um, and, you know, if you're a young person, like it's, it's, it's great, you, you know, I'm still, I'll be 27 soon, but it's like, it's fine. You know, I, I interact with a lot of 21 year olds at work and it's, it's <laughs> interesting to listen to them, you know, because I, I see myself in them a lot of the time. Um, I love the energy. Yeah. Definitely. No, that, that's awesome. I do feel quite fortunate because for me, I, I was, I was very lucky. I, I think you know this, but I, uh, I was able to live across seven different countries already mm. in my yeah. life. So far. Yeah. And the, the, way that has helped me in and just like in, in all aspects particularly in building connections with people and building those like you know there's little connections between you and someone else yeah yeah it's unbelievable it's just having and it is a good point it's something that i don't probably cover enough because it's more of a long-term strategy like you've got to kind of keep building that having those experiences in order to build those connections with others but for me for example you know if i meet someone who's you know from the caribbean i can be like hey i used to live there how good's this beach how good's this you know this this hotel this uh, mountain and, and instantly boom connections built so yep. yeah no i can i can level with you because look my family is from india i was born in the middle east my parents are working there so i've i used to speak arabic fluently when i was a kid um, i forgot but i i've grown, grown up there and i grew up here predominantly um and the part of india that we're from which is mumbai which is like the los angeles of india it's the most diverse city of India, right? We have people from all backgrounds because the film industry is there and everybody wants to be a superstar. So they fly. <laughs> um, but I've grown up around different people my whole life. Like I had, I had African friends when I was growing up in school. I lived in a very African dominant um, neighborhood when I immigrated to Australia. So we had a lot of African friends and I had, you know, these African friends. Um, I've had, I went to a school which is very diverse. I'm South Asian. So I, I speak a few languages um, with people. So I, I connect with South Asians a lot. Um, I've had like, you know, like Ang Anglo-Saxon background people that I, that I interact with, you know, so I've seen it all because I played cricket. So I played cricket with like a lot of white people and I related to them. And it's amazing because you, you come across like you, you have something to talk about with everybody, you know, um, which is which is awesome, like which is which is which is great. And like a diverse experience and a diverse group of people is like having that kind of access to things when you're young takes you very far, you know, makes you sensitive to things about another culture that you probably wouldn't have known. You know, um, I had like one of my, like my really good friend at work, she's Muslim. So she was doing Ramadan. Um, so she was fasting. So I was like, okay, like, I'm not going to eat in front of her because I lived in, a, I was born in a Muslim country. So I know what Ramadan's like, like, you know, I grew up there and I understand like when someone's not eating or drinking the whole day, I'll take that into account or, you know, just, just anything really, you know? Um, yeah. It's, 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 it's something I'd, re I'd really recommend. Get out there, meet people, um, get out there and experience things, you know, don't be silly, like don't go out of the way and do something crazy and wreck your life um, because there's a lot of peer pressure on young people <laughs> to do that. Um, I listen to rap music, so I know, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, but at the same time, like do enjoy, enjoy being like in, in uni. It's, it's really fun when it's there. Um, it's, it's fun to have a full-time job as well and to, to manage your time well, but yeah, that's the thing. And professionally, these things play a big, uh, especially in Australia, we have a culture where your managers are like your friends. I was talking to somebody who worked at NAB and they were like, we, I, I went to interview for a job and the manager's like, yo, you want to get a drink? And like, we went to a bar and we had a chat and he's like, yeah, you got the job, man. I already like you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, I'm not joking. This really happened. This is the guy who worked with my cousin at NAB and he said this and I was like, wow, like it's, it's crazy, you know? Um, so having like a personality, developing a personality, not just for yourself, but also professionally, it's, it's, it's awesome given that you're interested in that, right? Cause you might want to take a year off to build like a video game and that might be your interest and that's great. Like, but it's still a story. 
Definitely. And it's funny. I know we're kind of, this is getting a bit long, but oh, sorry, no, no. I, uh, one thing that people, a big misconception people often have is, you know, your, your interview, your LinkedIn, your resume, it should just be a hundred percent professional, a hundred percent relevant. You know, when someone asks you, tell me about yourself, you go, I have a degree, I have a internship, I have a job. And then that's kind of their answer. But um, when I tell people, you know, you got to put, you know, have, have a bit of that, you know, t- flavor to your answer, you know, really try and connect with people with, with your answer. You know, one of the first guys actually helped with the, this whole job thing. Um, he ended up getting an, actually quite a cool story. I'll, I'll shorten it. But he, he had that kind of approach to his, you know, resume and his interviews and everything. Yep. And so, but then he wasn't telling anyone that on the side of university, on the side of this experience he had, he was managing a team of gamers to perform in an, uh, international tournaments. And they were winning like, I think it was like over 80 grand of uh, tournament money. Yeah, those, those and, are huge. This was so kind of abstract and, and it was just kind of not really professional, but not, you know, he didn't really talk about it. And I, I said, look, and that's the first line we put in his resume. It was tell me a bit about yourself, boom. It was like, I'm an esports, you know, game kind of manager with the backstory. And the funniest thing is not only did he go from, you know, hundreds of applications with pretty much no responses to getting an interview at EY very, very quickly. Wow. But in the assessment center, the funniest thing is that he applied for, I think it was like assurance or something like that, you know, classic yeah. business side of things. But then in the assessment center, because it was mixed with other groups, he actually t- was talking to the tech guys, the yeah. tech team. And they liked him so much because of that, you know, how he was kind of branding himself there. That they <laughs> actually poached him. He didn't even apply for them, but yeah. they actually took him and made him an offer, even though he never applied to that position that's online. <laughs> so no, that's how it is. Yeah, that's, that's literally, and that's the good thing because, you know, that's another thing I like to tell people mm-hmm. coming from a business degree. We get like, I've noticed like myself at least, and I can see this for a couple of people around me too. When you're young, like when you're 20, 21, and you, you think like, oh, I'm going to go and work and you get caught up with the image of the job. I tell people, look at the nature of the job that you want to do. What gives you like joy? Like what feels, and there's going to be aspects of any job that you're not going to like, but you're going to have to do. But there's like about like the 60 to 80% of the job that you enjoy. If you enjoy the nature of the work, then you, it, it happens in a flow. You pick up better, you, you know, you enjoy it more. That's really important because like, like there's people that are running big companies, they wear hoodies to work every day, right? There's, you know, so I know there's this, there's this, um, there's this romance that we've had. And I think that's reducing over time with, with the image of doing a good job. Um, you know, I've had friends who've worked in investment banking, for example, and they, there's a lot of, there's a great image of investment banking. Um, but the reality is like your hair's falling out. You're working 13 to 60, 16 hours a day. Your eyeballs are like completely <laughs> red and, you know, it's, it's that way, but some people love investment banking. They go and end up becoming partners because that's what they love to do. Um, but like, yeah, that's the thing I'd, I'd recommend. Even with tech, like there's a big image on tech, like how it's pre- presented in the media. Whereas like, oh, I'm a coder, like I'm hacking into the system, you know that. But it's actually just like, oh, I'm like reading this line of code, I'm copying and pasting this <laughs> function in, and like, you know, making sure it works. It's, so there's, there's all that sort of um, advice that I'd give to people as well. Um, because it's, re- and clean up your social media. I cannot deny that, um, you know. <laughs> just clean it up be careful what you say i mean i know i put a lot of jokes on social media just because i love making people laugh and you know i have my own thing on it but but be careful with what you post like if it's hyper political if it's hyper aggressive if you you know you're you're leaving a review for like custom experience just be just be noticed that like be advised that people know that that was the first thing i did um in in um in uni because i went and looked at stuff i have posted when i was like 13 14 years old <laughs> in memories i'm like delete delete delete, delete. <laughs> this is bad <laughs> you know <laughs> um but it's really important really even on linkedin like you know first of all i, I personally I've, I've like stopped arguing with people in comments i think that's it's just it's just it's a waste of my time and my sanity it's just not like you don't know the person's situation and why are you stressing yourself out but that as well like, that's been noticed by people so <laughs> just oh, yeah. that keep 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 be careful even with like drunk photos things like because i know in university there's a there's a culture of getting drunk and all that those are the things that they told us um 
at uni when we were clearing up everything like yo just be careful um because employers might do a check on your social they most likely will and yeah yeah and uh don't leave any loose ends because uh, when I, I left the loose end, I was like, I think I was like a year into KPMG yeah. and we were out kind of on a, on Friday, everyone was like, oh, let's go get, you know, drinks and stuff. Yep. And um, then they're like, oh, what's your Snapchat? And I was like, oh, crap, that, that is not an appropriate name for a Snapchat. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I had to make a brand new Snapchat on that yep. day because I completely forgot. But luckily, I was sober enough to realize before giving it to yeah. them. I went to drinks with somebody and one of the other graduates was like, should we all add each other on Facebook or not? I'm like, look, I'm like, you, I'm like, if you didn't, I wouldn't feel bad because I, I can level with you. Right. Um, and I understand, I love stand up comedy, for example. And some of the stand up comics I watch are like pretty, pretty dark. And that's why I kind of understand like a lot of the things that are going on in the world right now. So I told him, look, if you, if you're not comfortable, man, like absolutely no stress. I don't think that you disrespect me or anybody else like that but if you're not comfortable sharing your facebook with people at work um because you know of all these reasons it's absolutely okay you know because sometimes you can have a circle of friends and you might say something but in a professional world it's like it's taken completely the other way around and you don't want to disappoint a client or you lose your lose your job over it or even get into a position of explaining G you know given that like one of the leaders i've spoken to at the company she told me a story like when she went for work drinks years back um, she she got she she hit the wine really hard, um, and she called one of the senior directors in that time a jerk, like to his face, <laughs> and she regretted the next day. But look, here she is; she's a leader, so people make mistakes and stuff as well. Not saying that I encourage that, and she encouraged that, but it happens sometimes. We're human, you know. Um, but where we can minimize that, we have to remember we're in a professional realm. Like, um, even when I go to work drinks and stuff, I don't drink hard. You know, I just I don't because it's just not. Even if I do just with other grads, like I I don't like it's just a risk, you know, you might do something dumb and then you pay, pay, pay the consequence for it. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Wow. That was a, that was a chat that was full of uh, windy pathways and interesting advice. <laughs> That's just how it has to be, I guess. <laughs> that was good though. Cause it was uh, yeah, I think, I, I hope people watching this would have got some value in seeing, you know, this is uh, kind of how you can get into an associate consultant position at one of the best consulting companies in the world and do it humbly yeah you just got to do it humbly just got to be human like it's like you just got to own it like it's fine you know just be just be comfortable in your skin uh, not too comfortable <laughs> like <laughs> you know <laughs> like that's not that story wearing a hoodie to the interview <laughs> 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 nah, it's funny. I, I think in my interview, like my um my VP was just like in her home clothes. She was just relaxing. Her cats were like walking. <laughs> She's very yeah. proud of her cats. So it's fine. I mean, some people are pretty chilled, you know, that's the thing. But the, the attitude has to be like, yeah, like we're just human beings. We're just trying to do some stuff. We're trying to work together. Because I've noticed like a lot of times, like you know, you've worked at big four companies as well. Like they'll bring a senior grad, some person who's had a crazy trajectory. And that you look at that person and you feel like such an imposter. You're like, damn, how is like Steve so good? How has he become like, you know, a senior, you know, associate, like, or whatever the role title is so quickly. My thing is like, Hey, how do I get a job? Oh, this is the thing I'm going through uni. I like to be human to people. Um, you know, you know, sometimes you come across people that you, when you're in uni and they're like, they start using big words and they start to, you know, sound jazzy and you're like, how do I get a job, my friend? <laughs> like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, you know, so keep it simple, keep it, keep it simple. I don't know. Yeah, what else I can say, but um, but that's that's just the, that's just me. Awesome, awesome. That's a lot of advice. I uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, any final words? words or we we good? Nah, just, just best of luck to every best of luck to you too, man. I'm really happy that things are working out for you, you know, and you're doing a good thing here. Um, thank you. You know, Thank so you. that's, that's really good. Yeah, I think a lot of people need that guidance. I think, you know, especially like international students, like they, I know when I was in uni, they were like, how do I get a job? How do I, you know, um, how do I get permanent residency and, and that sort of thing. So definitely look, reach out to me if you need some kind of support with your thing. And, you know, I'm always, <laughs> always happy, you know, if you want any feedback or if there's somebody who wants to talk about Cat Gemini or what I do, I'm happy to chat with people. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I, I took, I remember your, some of your feedback from before you, you uh, were giving me feedback on the colors of the, the presentations and things like that. So I actually have taken that on. If you go and see the, the new, uh, the new stuff, lots of nice colors there. 
and there are no. printouts, slide printouts. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're both from consulting backgrounds, so you know the importance of like good-looking decks, right? <laughs> That's it, yeah, That's I probably still have a little bit to go, but they've gotten better over the years. That's good on you, man. No, it's good on you for trying. <laughs> I just thought I'll, I'll give out as much feedback as I can because I knew when I connected with you, you were doing a lot of the setting up of your of your business, like. So I'm, I, and I can, I'm really happy to see it grow and I'm really happy to see you like working for yourself and, you know, doing that. It's, it's good, you know, so no, awesome, man. I'll, I'll have a look at it. It's on your LinkedIn, the, the link, or you can just send uh, me the link to you. It's your... just on my, yeah, my website, uh, mygradjobs.com.au. But yeah, yeah, check it out. You 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 just sign in with your account. You got your, <laughs> yours will still work. So, um, but yeah, and likewise, thank you very much for taking the time. Yeah, I know you're super, super busy and, um, yeah, uh, well done with what you've achieved. It really is a, an awesome story and, and a very, I think to summarize it, a very humble one. You know, you've oh, gone you. from, you know, back starting study 2013, worked in the cool centers, you had time off, you know, this really nice trajectory and landing an amazing job, you know, a job that people would really kill for, but you've done it in such a nice way and, uh, and appreciate you, you know, providing all this advice as well. I'm sure, you know, You'll, you'll continue to go very, very far. And and likewise, if there's anything I can help you with, you know, whatever that may be, uh, please do let me know. Oh, for sure. And for sure. Uh, and yeah, the last thing is is writing. Are you still writing? Are you still blogging? Yeah, I, I do. But now I feel like, so basically it's, it's something that I do just as a hobby now. Like yeah. I'm not really trying to do it mainstream. So with me, what I do is I have a list in my, like I just write ideas down. And then whenever I get the capacity to, I just go and write. Um, sometimes I just draft things and I don't post them until I'm, I'm uh, just chilling. Like I, I make memes as well for fun. Like sometimes I do all that kind of stuff. So I just do creative things for fun. Um, work's been a bit busy lately. So I've been sort of, and I've lockdowns just ended about like a month back. So getting used to catching up to everybody with everyone again. And, you know, like, so, cause now everybody wants to go out things. So just being busy, but yeah, I do, I do write occasionally. Um, I, I know I feel like I need to write something I do. Um, it can be deep. It could be funny. It just depends. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and where, 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 if someone watches this and they think, you know, I want to connect with this awesome Kaiser guy. Yep. Where, where's the best place to do that? Check me out on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's where I post some of my writings. Um, you can see my medium over there. I don't know what my, my medium's at K underscore rod. I think I'll have to double check and give that to you. But um, yeah, it's it's if you go on my LinkedIn, you'll find one of my articles that I've written an article like like last year on World War Two, which was a big article that I wrote. Um, I compared the pandemic to World War Two, um, and I used like the Saving Private Ryan movie. So that's an article that I've written. But I, I yeah, I occasionally write now, but I I should get back into it and and put stuff out. Um, there's just so much so much stuff to do, you know, every day. So you want to rest <laughs> and get back. And I've been sick over the last week, so yeah just chilling but yeah thanks no thanks for that mackenzie thanks for that shout out <laughs> <laughs> no worries i love uh, i'm sure people getting in contact and uh thanks again i'll uh yeah i'll catch you soon keep in touch no problems no problems if anybody wants to apply to cap gemini just you know reach out to me if they need any info cool legend thank no you worries. see will. you mackenzie i'll take you up on that <laughs> all right see bye. you mate have, have a great day bye you too